Hello welcome back to a new video here on my YouTube channel and in today's video I'll take you through what I did to this image that I have posted on my Instagram handle so if you don't know my Instagram I'll link it down in the description below you can check it out so I shot this image I think um, before the lockdown here in Ghana that was I think three or four months ago I uploaded it behind the scenes it was actually a whole shoot where we shot three different looks and I did the beauty part with other creatives which i'm hoping to link them down in the description below i'll suggest a link card i think up here so that you guys can go check it out the behind the scenes of this particular shoot so i just want to take you behind the edit of what i have done which is this so this is the complete edit and this is the before so i have started this new um uploading where i put up videos of what i have done behind let's say a particular editor i've posted on my instagram handle and i've gotten quite a lot of feedbacks which um it's quite encouraging and that's actually pushing me to do more and more of these videos so if you think it's a cool idea kindly let me know down the comment section below if you want me to continue doing these kind of videos so that i can learn from it so i don't want it to be like a whole boring video where i'll take you through what i did here and that's and that's it's something i've already done and i want to take you through what i went through during the process so the complete sheet that i will take you through every single thing i did in here from the beginning so for every great retouch right i normally if you've been following me for quite a while i normally say you have to spend a lot of time behind your healing and i i, I most of the time spend quite a lot let's say an hour roughly an hour 30 minutes behind healing because i'm going i'm literally not going to do frequency separation on this image so i take my time and heal every part of this image so take a look at this when i zoom in um this is the before and this is the after so i did quite something here using liquify and clone stamp to to take quite a lot of things out so if you can see there's been some reshaping and some healing so with healing i like to use the clone stamp too and the healing brush too to do most of my work i don't like using a spot the only time i'm using a spot is when i want to work on the eye which this is a spot healing brush too anytime i want to use this and i know the eye has no detail that i need so i use that to take away a lot of veins in the eye together with a little bit of content aware and all that so yeah basically that's what i did at the healing took out this issue right here and i tried to keep it as natural as possible so some people can use frequency separation to actually do this what i have done here but i like to use the healing brush to the clone stamp to and sometimes the spot healing brush to do this job so if I should zoom out, this is the before and that's the after, before and after. So a lot of time went into this, like I said, roughly an hour and you, you get a clean image to work from. Now looking at this, the face looks quite different from the skin. Yes, it happens whenever everyone is made up, every subject or every model goes through the makeup process most of the time the face looks different from that of the skin because makeup is not applied on the skin so i wanted to match the color of the face that, to that of the skin so i did some color correction here if you can see i lightened it up a little bit worked within the reds added some the opposite of red is green so i added some greens into the skin and added some blue so if you look at here added greens into the midtones added some reds opposite of red is green added some reds into the shadows and in the blues added some yellows into the midtones in the rgb channel i increased the midtones a little bit so this is what i have in here for my color creation it's just affecting the down parts of the skin now to the background looking at the background um here looks quite brighter than this side or the opposite so i tried to fix that 
by lighting up my background using curves and changing the blending mode to screen. So from there, what I did after this, normally I would advise you um, color grade your images before you do your dodging and bending because after color grading, uh, it takes away a lot of uh, um, information. If um, it takes away a lot of imperfections and informations, whereby when you're using your dodging and bending, you don't have to do much work than you doing the dodge and bend and then color grading later because after you dodge and bend and you color grade you obviously um, affect your luminosity issues your color issues may and you might see a lot of shifts in there and you'd have to come back to your dodging and bending layers to fix that shift or those shifts so i like to color grade which i should have brought here but because i, I don't know because of how i edit after i do my dodge and bend layers I normally bring the color grading upward. So color grading, this is what happened in the color grading section. And if I should open the folder, this is what's in there. If you have been following me on my Twitter handle, I think I post a lot of tips on my Twitter handle a lot. I like to tell people that whenever you want to color grade your image, first, firstly, what you need to do is to desaturate the image. And with desaturation, I use gradients map black and white. So if I double tap, you see blacks in my shadows, whites in my highlights, and I've reduced the opacity. Next, I added my color, um, my lats, which I have been putting up for sale for quite a while. So if you're interested, kindly hit me up. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description below. So this is my Choco Tone in 2, which I used for this. The Choco Tone in 1 also could have worked. It added some blues that I liked, but I needed some yellowish feel in my skin because she was more of um, the car I, I don't say something to contradict myself but she, she was more of um, a lighter shade of chocolate so I settled for Choco Tone in 2 um, color balance I added some yellows in my shadows and reds then the opposite well, I didn't do the opposite. I think I added some blues here. Blues and reds in my highlights. And that's what I got. So this is the before my choco tuning up. Sorry, the lats. I reduced the opacity. It takes away certain colors on the skin. So I added some colors back and added an S curve, a slight S curve where I actually opened up the midtones and reduce the shadows a little bit so this is the before and after to add a little bit of contrast to the image and looking at this i have my opacity at 42. a bit of selective colors in there i like to work in my blacks a lot so this is what i did in my blacks added some yellows so i added some blues in my blacks added some reds in my blacks and added black to my blacks to make it more punchy. That's why I did it in the whites. Nothing in the whites, nothing in the neutrals, nothing in the reds, and nothing in the yellows. So that's that. And with this, I tried. This is more of the tuning where I match the face to the skin. Looking at this, even after all what I've done and the earlier color correction down here, um, I still had to make. The contrast on the face match that of the skin so i used gradient map and if you look at the gradient map i i think i've shown this on my uh, my one of my youtube videos where you pick up the color so let me just hide this let's hide this whole thing if i will pick up let's see so with these color these two colors are foreground color and a background color if i want the shadows on my foreground color i hold alt on the keyboard and tap for this color so roughly i want to say this is my shadows then i hold x on the keyboard and pick up my highlights so i have highlights and shadows so if i want um, this to be represented on a gradient map all i have to do is just pick up the gradient map too and this is represented but this time around the shadows um the highlights have become the shadows and the shadows have become the highlights so that's not what you're looking for after you've done your color selection just flip it over and pick up so now i have my shadows 
with this darker shade and my highlights in the lighter shade and this is what i do to get the midtones i turn it off make sure the adjustment layer is selected not the max tap on this and select a middle gray area let's say 50 51 50 let me put 50 tap on color then select my midtones make sure the midtones is not brighter than that of so let's say this way so now I have shadows midtones and highlights and this is a representation of what's going on in here and if i want to change the blending mode i change the blend mode to color and normal sometimes so this is what i did let me delete this this is what i did in here in this toning layer so let's rename this to toning sorry this is what i did in here so the same thing i showed you guys earlier that's what i applied here so the first adjustment layer had a blending mode of color the second one had a blending mode of soft light you know that's what i got so it gives you that blending it gave me that contrast it gave me those colors i needed on the face and that's of the skin so and i reduced the opacity of course i'm always reducing my opacity so you know this is what happened in the color gradient so before and after before and after then we come to my dodging and bedding so i had a folder for skin i had a folder for eye and i had folder for lips so it's the same thing i've been teaching you guys from before in any of my youtube videos concerning dodging and bend so curves this is way up and that's way down right so dodge bend and if i should turn it on this is what i did in the skin so no frequency separation this is what happened in the skin folder of dodging and burning let me turn up the dodge and let me turn on burn and dodge so this is the dodge if i hold alt and click on the max this is what went behind the dodge and if i should turn on the burn this is what went behind the bend. so dodge and burn it's not that scary it just takes time and practice and if you want if you really want to learn you can sit down and then this trick so before and after before and after it actually smoothens out well the smoothening came from the healing because it took away a lot of imperfections then the dodge and burn seals the deal so before and after just subtle changes using a brush flow of one with my airbrush turned on right so i think and, and further videos i'm hoping to do more on dodging and bending, like a complete research on dodging and bending, which wouldn't take that long i'll just make an understanding video on how i understand dodging and bending. i hope you understand it too so yeah and this is for the eye dodging and bending of the eye i had to whiten the eye in addition so this was in the eye, the dodge, the burn, right? And the eye whitening. I already have a video on this and I had to add some depth to the eye. So in all, this is the dodge and bend to the eye. And this is that of the lips. So adding depth and definition to the lips. And yeah, that's it for, let me group these and name this dodge and pen. Before and after, before and after, no magic, right? So after this, then I did a little color matching where I sample colors on the images i don't know if you can see them but there are some dark patches on the empty layer here i i create a new layer change the blend mode color and let's hope you i think let me see i'm hoping you see this but okay it's not that visible but yeah so after this i have saturation shifts where after dodging and burning either my saturation increases or it decreases on certain parts of the image 
um, if you've been with me for quite a while, dodge increases the saturation of the parts you've dodged, bend decreases the saturation. So saturation shifts using hue and saturation layer and making sure I tackle the reds. So minus 23 and let's see, let's see where I attacked. So somewhere around, I think the forehead, somewhere around the chin area and maybe somewhere around here. So let's see it before and after, before and after, before and after. I hope it will, it's that visible, but it works. Actually keeps the image um, having quite um, an even toning of saturation. Yes, there, there's supposed to be mismatch of saturation, but trying to match them actually works a lot. And the eyeshadow color. So when I shot this, I I I I remember the makeup artist putting up a green eyeshadow color. So I used hue and saturation layer, colorized it and placed it in the greens, and painted it in there with a brush flow of five percent. Then I added some vibrance to the lips, some sharpening to the eyes and the lips. Right. So if you can see before and after then a noise all over the whole image and this is what we got so this is the before and this is the after so thank you for joining on this video kindly subscribe share and comment and like this video so other people can see since youtube suggests um more liked videos to other people to watch and don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below if you have any concerns concerning this video or any other video I've been putting up recently. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.